Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be talking about the 2022 macroeconomics exam. This is set two, question number one. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your macroeconomics or macroeconomics exam. Let's get into it. So this question is all about the United States, and we're going to assume that the United States is currently in short run equilibrium, and we have an output level that is greater than the potential output. First thing we need to do is draw the ASAD graph, and we're going to label the current level of output Y1 and the current price level PL1. We're also going to label the full employment output labeled YF. So the first thing we need to do is have our axes labeled PL and our GDP for real GDP, a downward sloping aggregate demand curve, upward sloping short run aggregate supply curve. And at the intersection of those two curves, you have our current price level labeled PL1 and current output labeled Y1. And if you have all that, you get your first point. For the second point, we're going to add in the long run aggregate supply curve to the left of the current output. And beneath that long run aggregate supply curve, we are going to have our YF. And since Y1 is greater than YF, that means that we have an inflationary gap. And that shows that our output level is greater than the potential output of YF. For part B, we're going to assume that the government increases spending by $100 billion. And on our graph that we already drew in part A, we're going to show the impact on the price level and real GDP output. Now, government spending is a shifter of the aggregate demand curve. And since there's an increase in that government spending, it's going to shift that aggregate demand curve to the right. Draw in that new AD curve with some arrows and label the new price level PL2 and the new real GDP output as Y2. And if you shifted it to the right and labeled the price level and output, you got your third point. Next, we're looking at part C. Now we're going to assume that the marginal propensity to consume in the United States is 0.8. And we have to say how much real output and household savings will change as a result of the $100 billion increase in government spending. For CI, we have to remember that the spending multiplier is 1 divided by 1 minus the MPC. When we plug in the numbers and do the math, it tells us that the spending multiplier is five. And that original $100 billion increase in government spending times that five spending multiplier gives us a maximum change in real GDP of $500 billion. And that is our first answer for part C. For the second answer of part C, it's important to remember that the original amount of $100 billion is going to be spent at 80% and saved at 20% over and over and over again until the full $100 billion is saved and can no longer be spent. And so that original $100 billion will be the maximum increase in household savings as a result of the increase in government spending. In order to get this point, you need to get both CI and CII correct. And if you only got one of them right, unfortunately, it's no point. There's no half points in AP economics. For part D, we're going to graph the money market and show the effect of the change in real output that we already identified in part CI. So let's go ahead and get our axes for that money market graph out here. We have nominal interest rate on that Y axis, quantity of money on the X axis, a downward sloping money demand curve, a vertical money supply curve. And at the intersection between the two curves, we find our equilibrium nominal interest rate and our equilibrium quantity of money. And if you have all that there, you get your first point for this part. The second point comes from understanding that the money demand curve shifts when there are changes in the transaction demand for money. Since we have higher real GDP output, we are going to shift that demand curve to the right because more real output means more money will be demanded to process all those transactions. For part E, we're going to look at the change in nominal interest rate that we just drew in part D and say what will happen to the price of bonds that are already issued in the short run. In order to answer this part, we need to remember that there's an inverse relationship between the interest rate and bond prices. And since we saw an increase in the nominal interest rate in the money market graph a moment ago, that means that bond prices are going to decrease. Simply state that and you get your next point. For part F, we're going to assume that the United States and the European Union are trading partners with flexible exchange rates. The inflation rate in the United States is going to increase relative to the inflation rate in the European Union, and we have to explain the impact of that change in inflation rate on the foreign exchange market. And first, we're looking at the demand for US dollars. And remember, these changes are based on the inflation rate. When it comes to foreign exchange markets, always look at what variable you're supposed to focus on. In this case, it's the inflation rate. And it's important to remember that the demand for a currency 
comes from people wanting to buy things from this economy. Also, it helps to remember that inflation makes products more expensive. So that leads us to our answer. The demand for US dollars is going to decrease because the higher inflation rate in the United States will make US exports more expensive. US exports will then decrease, which decreases the demand for the US dollar. For part DII, we have to state what will happen to the value of the US dollar as a result. As we just explained, the demand curve for dollars is going to decrease. And if we check that graph real quick, we see that the decrease in the demand for the dollar causes the value of the currency to fall. And you don't have to draw the graph out to answer this question. Simply say depreciate, which is what it's called when the exchange rate falls. For part G, we have some currency manipulation going on by the Federal Reserve. They're going to attempt to keep the value of the dollar constant in the foreign exchange market despite the change in the inflation rate. So based on what we just saw in part FII, should the Federal Reserve buy or sell both the euro and the dollar? Now remember the Federal Reserve is trying to reverse the depreciation, which means they're trying to get the currency to appreciate. In order to cause the dollar to appreciate, the Federal Reserve will need to decrease the supply of dollars or increase the demand. And so in order to do that, they will sell the euro while they at the same time buy the dollar. And once again, you have to get both of those answers to get this point. And there you have it. Those are the answers for the 2022 set two question number one. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up that total review booklet. That's it for now. I'll see y'all next time.